Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. Today we're going to look at rounding to significant figures. And the first thing I want you to do is have a go at this task here. So I've got four numbers on the left, and I want you to round them each to the nearest 10, to the nearest whole number, to one decimal place and two decimal places. So please just pause this video now and try that. If you didn't know where to start, I'm just going to do one of them with you, um, and then you can pause and, and try again. So if we're rounding to the nearest 10, what we do is we look at the, um, the tens column, and we think, is this going to be nearer to 40 or to 50? We look at the number after it, and if it's uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, we keep the 4 the same. If it's 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we would round up to 5. We would then have to uh, change the 3 to a 0, because that will indicate place value. So that our final answer will be 540. I've done that one in some depth. The other ones, um, I, I, I'm just going to go through quite quickly. Uh, for the next one, the nearest whole number, I'll look at the 3. There's an 8 after it, so I'm going to round that up to 544. Four. One decimal place, I'm going to look here. There's an 8 after it, so it's going to be 543.9. Then two decimal places, 543.88. Okay, I'm going to just put up the other answers. And what you will find is that some of them were a little bit awkward. So if I'm asking you to round this number to two decimal places, well, there aren't you don't know it to do decimal places you shouldn't really just put a zero on the end that's not really rounding is it that's like adding extra digits on that don't aren't necessarily there because you might think your number is then known to that accuracy and then this last one nearest 10 um it, well yes okay it's going to be zero and zero but this is sort of a meaningless thing rounding something like this to the nearest 10 and I've set this up because this is precisely why we like to round to significant figures, because um, rounding to decimal places is all well and good as a starting point, but it's not, you can't just round any number to two decimal places, because if it's like 560, to round that to two decimal places doesn't make any sense, whereas rounding to significant figures will make sense, and we're going to talk about that now. Okay, so I've got a number here. Um, uh, 368,249, and I'm asking to round it to one significant figure, two significant figures, and three significant figures. The first thing we need to do is work out what do I mean by a significant figure. And basically, this, the first significant figure is the first digit in the number that is of importance. And in this case, it's this one here. This is my first significant figure. Um, it basically gives me the size of the number, doesn't it? It's like this 9 is not as important as the 3. The 3 is like if I said, you know, this is your, you've made this much money, you, you'd be much more focused on this 3, which represents 300,000, than on this £9 that you've got. So um, it then follows that um, any digit after... So the next digit after the first significant figure will always be the second significant figure, and so on. The eight will be the third. And fourth, fifth, and sixth go on here, okay? If I then want to round to one significant figure, all I do is exactly what I did for the nearest ten and one decimal place. I look at the first significant figure, I look at the number after it, and I decide, do I round it up? Or keep it the same. In this case, I'm going to round up because there's a six, so it's going to become four. But I still need to indicate place value, so I'm going to put my zeros where they used to be. It's going to become 400,000. So that is me rounding this number to one significant figure. Um, if I round it to two significant figures, I do the same thing. I look now at the six. Do I round it up or keep it the same? I'm going to round it up. This time I keep it a 3 and then it becomes 7. And again, I put zeros in to indicate place value. The last one, I look at the 8. This time I keep it the same. 
so 368000. Um, so it turns out for this question, I basically, one significant figure for this number is equivalent to rounding to the um, nearest 100,000. This one's to the nearest 10,000, and this one's to the nearest 1,000. But we don't need to use that language. Significant figures deals with it for us. OK, we're going to do another example. This time, I've got some zeros in there. Um, so this changes things slightly. Um, this number here is not the first significant figure because if I want to look at the size of the number, what is the what is the first digit that really tells me about the size? It's this one. So for significant figures, you don't include the zeros at the start. It's your first non-zero number. I don't really. I mean, you can make a note of that if you like. The first non-zero number, um, but it's getting a feel for it, understanding why I think is the more important thing. So we do the first significant figure and in the same way the eight is the second, seven is the third. At this point you might want to pause the video and, and try to round this yourself. Okay, I'm going to continue. So the first significant figure, I'm going to look at this five. I'm going to look at the one after it. Do I round it up or keep it the same? I'm going to round it up. Now this time I'm going to need my zeros beforehand. So they're going to still be there. And then I'm going to put my six in. And here I don't, I don't carry on with my zeros. Whilst I did need to here to indicate place value, I don't need to bother writing it. it technically the zeros go on forever. So I just stop it there. It's a bit different when I'm doing, dealing with decimals. For two significant figures, I look at the eight. I'm going to round that up. So it's going to be 0 0.00059. And then for the third one, I look at the seven. I'm going to also round that up 0 0.00588. So again, um, Rounding to significant figures makes sense for this number, whereas rounding it to the nearest 10 wouldn't. But in both of these cases, significant figures just deals with it for us. And we end up with three important digits for three significant figures and so on. OK, one more example. Um, again, if you'd like to, pause the video and have a go at this one. Otherwise, I'm going to go through it. Right, so now the three is our first figure, and that becomes our first significant figure. Now, do we include this zero as a significant figure? Yes or no? Hopefully you've thought about that. The answer is yes. Because even though we didn't include it here, that was because it didn't tell us about the size. It's five did. But now the zero is, is still, it's giving us an indication of the size of the thousands. We know that we've got 30,000. But how many thousands do we have? Well, we have zero. So you do include zeros after your first significant figure. The rules might seem a bit strange to you, or they might feel intuitive. I'm not sure. I, I hope you get into the latter category where you, where you are happy why, why things are significant figures or not. So rounding it now, we're going to look at the three. We're going to keep it the same so it becomes 30,000. We're going to look at the zero. That's going to stay the same. So that is also going to be 30,000 to two significant figures. That's OK. And then the last one, three significant figures, 30200. OK, returning to our original problem, if you remember, it wasn't meaningful to round them all to these different amounts. So it didn't make any sense really to round 2405.1 to two decimal places. But I want you to now to round these numbers to one significant figure, two significant figures, and three significant figures. And you should see they all they all make sense now. So that's the point of, of doing this. So please pause the video and have a go. Here are the answers. So when we are rounding 543 to one significant figure, we're actually rounding it to the nearest 100. But when we're rounding 23.9 to one significant figure, we're rounding it to the nearest 10. So significant figure just deals with it all and makes it sensible. And this is this is a very common thing to be asked. Um, if you're doing a calculation and it's like you get an answer that goes on forever or is not exact, 
then you're going to need to round it. And using significant figures is the way of doing this. We're going to look at one final example. So work out this number here on your calculator. If I was doing this question, well, I am doing this question, then I would, first of all, get the fraction button out on my calculator. Um, and then it will take you to the top and you can write the square root button and then you can write this in separately. This is going to be the easiest way to deal with this question. And then you'll go down to the denominator and you can just write, so you can basically type it in exactly as it looks. Write down all the figures on your calculator display. I get 1.240154. Do you know what? I'm going to stop there. They don't, they don't know how many... Um, the examiner I'm talking about here doesn't know how many figures on my calculator display. As long as I'm showing a reasonable number, some calculators will show about 50 digits and they don't actually want you to write down 50 digits, so I'm okay with that. Um, now, give your answer to part A to an appropriate degree of accuracy. This is a new word. What does it mean by that? It's not saying round it to one, two or three significant figures. It's not demanding this. We have to figure out what would be sensible. Um, okay, here goes. So. We need to look at all the numbers and see how accurate they were. For example, if I only had a three here, then I might say, well, I only know it. I, know, I only know this number accurate to one significant figure. How do I know if it might, it might have been rounded from 3.04 down to three, or it might have been 2.99 and been rounded up. So I can't really be sure that my answer is any more accurate than say one or two significant figures. That's just an example. Here we've actually got all the numbers to with either three digits or four digits. So I think we can safely say these are accurate to um, are definitely accurate to two significant figures if we're going to round them. And I would give my answer to three significant figures. This this one's a bit more accurate again, but I can I can be I can be sure of my answer to two significant figures. There might be some errors because I've got rounding potentially on all these uh, third digits these errors might add up and I might lose accuracy in my third digit, but it's generally accepted to give such an answer to three significant figures. So I would round it, I would look at the third significant figure, and in this case, I'm gonna write 1.24. Um, if you gave your answer to two significant figures, then you'd, you'd probably be okay, I think. And I'd say four, you are pushing it. So I'd say two or three, but best to go with three because if you were doing an experiment, you'd be aware that this 4 is maybe a little bit dodgy, but this 1.2 part is okay. Good, that is everything um, on significant figures. It's just a case of applying it now and making sure you know the rules. Thank you.